is about to get very real for the varicella sostra virus. I'm injecting myself with the varicella sostra or chicken pox vaccine, which is a neutralized version of the virus. This virus causes the sostra in the old age or chicken pox in the young age or lots of conditions in between. I'm injecting the vaccine into the muscle, into the leg muscle, the side one of the leg, the one that doesn't have so many veins. The vaccines they have to be injected into the muscle to simulate the infection. The virus is neutralized. I'm injecting it slowly. Virtually there is no feeling as my, uh, when the needle goes in and when the needle is kind of inside of the muscle it doesn't hurt anymore. Now let's get it out. Yes. Basically I've selected this muscle far away from the veins. Now let's get some stretching and a yoga routine to move it around. Those were the basic tools for the vaccination. The best tool is the knowledge and the skills and the information that you get. There was one pre-filled syringe with the liquid, one little bottle with the dry powder of the neutralized varicella virus, two needles, one for injecting the liquid into the small bottle and one to, in, to get it out and to inject it into the muscle. There are two in case one gets stuck with the rubber from the bottle, you can use the second one, they are the same size. Antiseptic before the injection is very important, alcohol for the overall cleaning and the iodine solution for the marking of the spot. And for the second This was the price that I paid in 2018. The cashier's name was Leticia, which is nice. And this was the manufacturer. Varilrix Glaxo Smith Klein. Not all people can get access to it. It's a privilege to have access to vaccines. Not all people have the varicella vaccine. Many people don't have it. And the uh, varicella zoster virus is a chicken pox. People think it's, it's harmless because you get it in the childhood and you never have to worry about it again. But in reality, this virus, it stays dormant. It sleeps in the body. It eats the nerves of the body. It only appears in the later stage of life when the immune system is not so nice and it's not so tough. Cannot work as efficiently as in the adulthood when everything is well. There are all kinds of side effects from the varicella zoster chickenpox. It works with combination with other viruses in case you get an infection from the other one and your immune system becomes weaker. You will also suffer from the varicella virus, even if it was harmless all the time in your body. Varicella virus can be transmitted through basically through touch. It can survive two days in the open environment through coughing, through air, through injections, through liquids, all kind of stuff it can be transmitted to. And many people don't have the varicella um, or the chicken pox vaccine. So it's a good vaccine to get revaccinated. Adults usually don't think about vaccination. They only think about it when they go to a vacation or something or when they get really, really sick and want to prevent further sickness, they get vaccinations. Also many people in the world, they don't have the access to vaccines because they require fridges and many, many, many people then have, do not have this privilege to get vaccinated. And there are many other people who just don't get vaccinated because they're afraid and because they are speculating that the vaccines are some kind of a conspiracy, conspiracy, conspiracy. The only vaccine that causes the side effects is when you get a fever. Real fever is the hexavalent vaccine 
which is polio, HIV, tetanus. I don't remember, you have to look it up, but it's a very potent one and you get like a fever for one or two days and many parents, they speculate, oh, that's very bad. No, the real viruses and the real sickness, it's, it can make your ch- kids uh, and children disabled. It can make people disabled. And the side effects of illnesses, they usually require treatments like creams, therapies, going to special vacations, going to the clinic, going to the doctor, which is far more expensive than the three shots of the vaccine. And all these vaccines, they get more simple and more cost affordable, cost efficient. They should cost maybe 20 instead of 45 at the moment. Let's get vaccinated, re-vaccinated. It's a good thing for the prevention of the possible infections or the, for the prevention of the possible side effects, which will require more expensive treatments. And I think the insurance companies, they should really vaccinate people in bulk to lower their cost. And they shouldn't accept like people who are not vaccinated. They should pay higher cost because they are probably prone to infections and prone to sickness. And the people who are vaccinated, they're usually better workers because they have fewer sick days in a year. And it also feels awesome. The muscles and the nervous system is more energetic and more vigorous and more alive because it doesn't have to feed the viruses that feed on the nerves. It's a good thing to get vaccinated. No matter what the opinions say, no matter what the people, the speculators and the conservative people or the, no, the hyper-conservative people, not the conservative, the hyper-over-the-edge conservative, non-logical conservative people or the weird weirdos who suspect conspiracies in science without studying or trying themselves. Let's look where it's good to inject the vaccines and why. Balloons, brains and veins are not the good things for the injection of vaccines. The muscles are usually better for the slow simulation of the sickness. The white blood cells and the protective blood cells of the immune system will arrive in the muscles and slowly figure out, oh, there is a simulation or a possible infection, and they will start and stimulate the immune system to learn about this infection and to recognize the possible infection into the future. Look at this, I just punched the hole into the balloon with a small needle, and it's so nice that it doesn't pop the balloon. can basically punch it, it doesn't pop the balloon. This is a very small needle, the 1.3 millimeter needle for the injections of the vaccines. Again. Just can punch many holes, it does not destroy the balloon. Or maybe it's some kind of special balloon, but... Yes. Now let's look at the body parts where the vaccine should go in. That's it, that's the one layer of the human existence, the body, the veins of the body. One part goes into the heart and it exits in red, oxygenated. All these veins, the vaccines should not go into them, they should go into the muscles. If you go them, if you put the vaccine in the inner side of the leg, there are more veins, so it kind of or the inner side of the arm, there are more veins. This is why they go into the, the shoulder, because there, is, there are fewer, fewer veins and it's 
far more difficult to make a mistake or this side or this side, external side of the leg or external side of the leg mm, or external side of the lower leg Let's look at the muscles This is the muscle layer of the physical existence of a being a human I, this time I selected this side muscle slightly which is more difficult to inject to I selected this muscle to inject to because I already had this type of vaccine in this muscle and in this muscle the best suggested one would be the large muscle of the leg which is on top and avoid any veins in there or the shoulder muscle from here the, from the outside Women don't have shoulder muscles. Many women don't have shoulder muscles, so it's all babies don't have shoulder muscles. Usually the nurses inject them into the shoulder, but because there is no space or no muscle, it is also possible to inject the vaccine into the upper part of the leg. And all of this is because the Injection of the neutralized virus has to be like a simulation of an infection and has to distribute slowly into the body throughout the from the muscle into the blood or nervous system or where the white blood cells, the defensive immune system cells get the reaction and they can slowly move into the area and simulate the the curation and the re immune system response in the case of the immune system they don't know it, that's a simulation and that's the good trick so they think it's a real infection and they build up the immune memory and the immune response and how to handle this type of infections In here we see the nerve layer of the human existence <laughs> the nerves they run from the bottom from the top to the bottom on all parts of the body and they concentrate around the spine and around the brain and about the hips around the hips they are not equally distributed some parts have more nerves and the very virus and the chicken pox it infects the nerves and lives in them it feeds on them in case you get the stiff neck in this area, you get the stiff neck in these areas. This would mean that the varicella virus or some kind of other virus is feeding on your nerves. That's using them as food or food supply. S slowly digesting. Um, the good indication is when the neck is kind of stiff and dry. It can be stiff from contraction but if it's dry and stiff it's a good indication of the viral infection it doesn't have to be a very cellish it can be short-lived one the influenza one but basically you see how all of the body is connected and if you get infection in the childhood somewhere around the lungs or somewhere around the chest it can easily be distributed in all parts of the body it can stay dormant let's say in this part and later on in life when you are 60 70 80 90 travel up the spine to the brain and cause all kind of neurologic disease when the immune system is weak and low on power it's good it's a good thing to get vaccinated get vaccinated re-vaccinated After the vaccination, you take this little bottle and you remove the sticker from the bottle and you put the sticker into the vaccination passport, the UN one, which you can buy at any pharmacy. And you also put the dates of the re-vaccination. So the sticker goes on one side. So the sticker is the proof that you got the vaccination. 
or you can also do the stamps from the doctor. I look at that. There is a calendar for vaccinations and all of the possible vaccines you can get. And my pass is so old. The varicella vaccine did not exist at that time. That is why I have to vaccinate myself with a varicella vaccine. Many people don't know there's an opportunity. Many old people, adult people, they only vaccinate their children but forget about themselves. The vaccination pass is important for travel to China or Russia or Latin America where they have the sicknesses. It's an important document for travel and might get a requirement to enter a country. Get vaccinated people, protect yourself and your future family or your family or protect the people you like or just protect yourself from the possible infections and the possible sicknesses. And the side effects that are expensive to treat. Get well, get happy. Tell us what you think in the comments, like the video and spread it around to the people who are skeptical about vaccines. There are also side effects, you have to read them up. The usual side effect is fever. All the other neurological side effects like debilitated brain or that stuff, no, it's way, way, way wrong. Research the encephalitis one and see what the, this disease does to the brain and the body and also see how cheap the vaccine is and how expensive is the treatment for the encephalitis. If you want to be to, to think about the benefits and the negative sides, there are more benefits, maybe like 1000 times more benefit than the negative side effects. The side effects are only for a few days and the negative parts of being non-vaccinated are for life. Think about it yourself, make up your own mind, get vaccinated, re-vaccinated, make comments, spread the video, like it, subscribe, have fun! Look at that, there is beer! A lot of beer! More beer! Let's get drunk!